In the last course search video, we discussed the search results page. Before that, we looked at the different criteria we could use to search with. In this video, we're going to take a look at the course overview page. You can get to this page from any set of search results by following the link from a particular course or class. Let's go from top to bottom and discuss what's on this page. The first item is the title of the course. In this example, I'm looking at English W131 Elementary Composition. Below that are two buttons, one for adding the course to my plan and one for bookmarking the course. We'll discuss the planner in a future video. For now, all you need to know is that you can add a course to your plan or bookmark it right here from the course overview page. Below that, I have a course description. A course description describes what you should expect to learn from a course, regardless of which particular class or section you take. If you're a little hazy on the distinction between a course and a class, I recommend that you watch the previous video on search results, as that describes the difference. A course description is the most generic version of a description, and a class description will be more specific to the class you take. Below that are course requisites. This describes what you need to take before or sometimes simultaneously with this course. In this case, we don't have any listed. Below that is the list of terms during which this course has scheduled classes. So here I see that W131 is scheduled for Fall 2013 and Spring 2014. Right below that is a list of when the course is typically offered. This is helpful because it lets me know that even though this course isn't currently scheduled for the summer, because the schedule for summer hasn't been built just yet, that I will likely see it on the summer schedule when that comes out. Below that is a list of general education requirements. We discussed these in the previous video, so I'm not going to go into detail about them here. But I do want to stress that it's a good idea to talk to your advisor about your gen ed requirements and any other matters having to do with your academic career. Just below the gen ed requirements is the subject this course belongs to, in this case English, as taught on the Bloomington campus. One thing we should take a closer look at is the scheduled terms. Let's choose the link for Spring 2014. If there are a lot of W131 classes offered during the spring, which there are, this might take a little bit. I'm going to fast forward a bit through this. Okay, great. Now we have the full list of sections for spring 2014. For each class, we have the following information. Class number is a unique number for the class within this term. Type indicates whether the section is a lecture, discussion section, recitation, etc. Right next to that is units, which represents the number of credit hours this class counts for. Meeting time and location tell you, just as you would expect, when and where the class is. Enrollment is the number of students currently enrolled in the class, and the limit is the maximum number of students. Instructor gives you the name of the instructor if one has been assigned yet. Under other, we list the mode of instruction. These classes are all in person, but other classes for other courses may offer online options. Under additional details, a class description will show for classes that have one. For example, here's one from Philosophy P105. Those are the basics for the course overview page. But before we go, I want to show you a course in which there are different sections associated with each other, such as a discussion and a lecture. Here are the classes listed for Chem C117 for Spring 2014. In the spring, there are three lecture options available and 23 discussion options. That means a student has 3 times 23, or 69 different combinations they can choose from. See that finite math helps. We can't really show all 69 possibilities, so what we've done is show the lectures in bold and list all 23 sections under each lecture. Okay, so that's it for our video on the course overview page. Next up in this series, we'll discuss using the new planner.